Hi, my name is Brandon Johnson, and today I have the pleasure of taking you for a ride on an awesome Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck. <laughs> I make a lot of videos, but this video is being made specifically for Bart and Maria from Wisconsin. See, they're buying this boat from me sight unseen. So my intention is to show you how great the condition is, as well as how to operate it, so that I can be your eyes and ears. I don't want to deliver the boat to you if you find something that I didn't show you. So that's what my intention is. So I woke up this morning with my normal routine. Got my two-year-old breakfast. Grace, what are you doing? Had a little batting practice. Ready? One, two, three. Nice hit! <laughs> then I'll let my 13 year old lab in. Good boy. But then I wanted to watch a little CRA 240 Sun Deck. I don't know, video clips here and there, other people's presentations, try to get some inspiration. So while I was in the shower, I set my phone up trying to see if I could get some good ideas. Baby blue ain't your color. That's the problem. See, there's thousands of videos on YouTube of CRA 240 Sundex. The problem is they're boring as hell. This, my friends, is the wood grain. Look at the fit and finish on that with electronic infused buttons and switches that control your radio and it controls this here smart crack. Oh, that's just wonderful. This right here is a fiberglass layered swim platform that covers up the lower unit from the gun. It's just running and jumping off. Unless you have one too many. Just what I've always wanted. This right here is your head with the optional pump out to get rid of all those unspeakable things you, your friends, and your family will do inside that. That's really disgusting. So, that being said, there's going to be some boring parts of this video just from having to show you, like, the operation, how to work everything. But I want you to remember, boating is supposed to be fun. So if I do my job now and correctly show you how to operate everything, it's only going to enhance your ownership experience to make sure that you guys have fun when you're on the water. So first thing you do before you put your boat in the water is you put your plug in. I think you're going to keep your boat on a lift, so just put it in, wrench tight, and that's really it. When it comes out of the water, you'll put your plug back in. So back here under the outdrive, the plug goes right here. Now hand tight's good enough for a test drive, but if you're putting it on the lift, they're going to crank this with a wrench. Not super tight because all that holds the housing in is three screws, so if it's super tight, you'll actually begin to turn the housing and stress crack the fiber class. Don't do that. So now I'm going to jump in the boat, Billy's going to back me in the water. What it really means to live life golden.
once you get your boat launched and you got your plug in, you just come back here, make sure your battery switches on. So in here we've got two batteries. We've replaced them both. They're both brand new. Inside here there's a switch. The switch says off one. So off one, both two, and off. Okay? We turn the switch to both. The alternator is going to charge both them batteries while we're boating. The only time we'd switch it is if we're going to stop, cobalt, throw an anchor, open the top, listen to the radio, jam out. We switch that to one or two. That way if we go to start the boat, we get click, click, click. We have one isolated, fully charged battery to fire the boat back up and enjoy the rest of our day. So we got this on both. When you're done for the day, shut it off. Coming up to the helm. So, I'm going to include a link in the description to the three things to do if you're about one start. To go over it real quick, click, 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 dead battery. Turn the key over, nothing happens whatsoever. Maybe you left your battery switch on, or maybe the boat's slightly in gear. If it's in gear, it will not start. The number one reason why people call me after the sale and their boats won't start, kill switch. Right here. But you'll turn the key and it'll just turn over, turn over, turn over, and will not fire. Okay? So that's just a safety feature, which is good. So if the kids are in here playing and we're coded out, we can flip this down to off right here. And the boat will not start. So, this is a multi-port injected engine. It's windy out here, so I'm going to shut that there wind block door to hopefully cut out on some of the wind noise. Also, you see the Sea Ray Owners Club thing right here? If you jump on Sea Ray's website, you can register with your whole number for free. And every time you go to a boat show, Turn the key. Just like that. Okay? Let's go ahead and do buttons and switches. Horn. Way up there. Viper. Oh, it's been disconnected. See, these are made for a splash, not a rainstorm. Bilge pump's automatic. You'll never touch it. Blower. Hopefully you can hear that. Let me shut the exhaust off. Accessory, God knows, sometimes you don't know until nighttime. Okay, this has captain's call exhaust. Right now it's off and the boat's quiet, okay? You only switch this at idle speed. Captain's call exhaust is a white pipe. Let me show you. Back here, you see the shiny things there and there? So when we switch our exhaust, we're choosing how the boat pumps out the water that it brings in to keep the motor cool as well as pumps out the exhaust. So, that being said, if we're going to try to switch that when we're going fast, there's a lot of water and exhaust going through there. And what turns the flaps inside there that we cannot see is thinner than a pencil. It's little lead bars. So we can actually, if we're going fast, switch that, put those in a bind and break them. So only switch them at idle speed. But so you know it works? On. Yeah. Cross hair in your chest. Make sure you man. Off. Water pump. This is for your water system, which is winterized right now. But you'll turn that on, and water will come out if you, if you put any water in it. A lot of people don't use that either because it starts to smell like sewage after a while. If you're driving at night, that's the navigation lights. The red and green is built in. The white light is down here. It comes out. It's in its clip right here. And it just plugs in right here. That's where your night light goes. If you're stopped at night, you're anchored, so that's just the anchor light right here. Cockpit lights are inside, courtesy lighting, right there, one up in the bow, and it's easier to find it at night time. One up there on the side. Okay? It's on the right side. Down low, you probably can't see it. <laughs> so now, you got tilt steering, so you can kind of set the wheel where you want. Kind of a quick note on condition. You know, we sell a lot of these, and I hate to say this in this video because it, it's hard to recreate. But look how beautiful the dash panels are, how shiny they are. And then, see, Sea Ray is owned by Brunswick, which is why it's such a premium product. Mercury Mercruiser is also owned by Brunswick, which is why Sea Ray gets stuff first, and it's 
exclusive to Sea Ray, not made available to anyone else for many, many years. So that's why all of our gauges are digital right here. This will tell you more than you ever want to know. Voltage, hours, how much gas we're using, our depth. Now this is a neat feature right here too. So you got your Speedo, engine temp, oil pressure, trim, fuel. But watch what happens. I leave this on depth when I trim up. See it starts reading my trim angle. Up, down, see the two gauges here? Let's do it again. Up, down, then you just wait a little bit, a little bit longer, and it goes back to depth. So that's pretty smooth. Um, a few little items while we're idling to the no wake buoys here. There's nothing wrong with this ignition switch. It's just as tight as the day it was new. But in the future, maybe never, but maybe five, six years from now, this will get loose in here. And if that happens, you just pop these screws off, get behind it and hold it, and tighten up the cap. The cap, the key goes in, is actually a nut. And the ignition switch itself is a bolt. If we're going to listen to the radio, we just turn the key off and turn it the other way. Because if the key's on, it runs our hour meter. Now, shifting is very smooth. Okay? You got the little red trigger here. You lift up. There's a definitive catch for forward. Then your throttle range is beyond that. Neutral. Reverse. Throttle range is beyond that. So it makes this boat extremely easy to maneuver because you have precision control. Um, I've had a lot of people that are excited to drive. As they accelerate, they got their finger on the trim up button. Whoa! Boat's not going anywhere because the out drive's out of the water. That's no good at all. Okay? So go back down. Now, in terms of tilt and trim, I'm going to include another video in the description that explains how to operate tilt and trim. But when you're boating, you want it down. When you're cruising or you want to go fast, you trim it up. The video explains all that. For the purpose of driving this boat on the water, I'm actually going to take the camera from Billy and I'm going to go full speed, full throttle. So you know how the boat runs under a load. It's very important to do that. And then I'm going to trim up. When I trim up, referencing the trim video, OutDrive is going to release the whole boat. We're going to go a lot faster. So I just want to push the boat to the limits so that you know it's very strong and tight mechanically. Okay? Uh, a couple other little things. Stereo remotes right here. Works great. Turn it up. First things first. Back down. You also have a remote control right here. Okay. Then this button right here scrolls through these systems. I know I'm going fast. But this video is getting long already. Okay. Uh, your radio itself is right here. So it's a CD player. You can also plug your phone into it right there. Okay. Uh, extra keys. So that's nice. Owner's manuals are in here. We got a cooler, a table leg. The Bobby did the compression test on it, which was excellent. Didn't put the motor lid back on, so I'll do that. And this lid right here goes over the sink, but when you're trailering it, it'll blow out. Uh, it's got the factory cooler in it still. So to me, a boat is cared for nicely if they care for everything that it comes with nicely. It's amazing how many boats we get in that have nothing. It's like this has the table, the pole, the bell filler cushions are underneath the, this seat, the plates over here, all the owner's manuals are in there. So now, I'm going to take the cam from Billy. We're going to drive this bad boy. Okay, once again, we're starting off trimmed all the way down. So this boat planes extremely smooth. There's absolutely no trick to getting it to plane. The steering is also very smooth, you know, power steering naturally. But I want you to watch the nose of the boat. I mean, I can still have perfect, and we're already planing. And we've already planed, we haven't even hit 20 miles an hour. That's why the self-planing hull is amazing. So we're running nice and smooth here. So kind of like a good cruise speed where the boat just feels smooth. It's right around in the, you know, early 30s, you know, trim down, trim up, it doesn't matter. But the boat's real smooth right here. So I'm running about 3,400 RPM at about 28 miles an hour. So now, let's go ahead and hammer down. So we're hitting 40 at about 4,800 RPM. Trimmed all the way down, so let's trim up. 
boat's going to release. We're really getting on top of the water now. We're running a little over 5,000 RPM. Well over 40 miles, 35, 40, 46 or 7 mile an hour roughly. Kicking off rooster tail. Boat runs like a striped ass leopard. People say, do I slow down when I turn it if you want to? But I think it's fun to just turn hard now. This boat handles so well. slow down, I'm going to show you how to operate the trim. Okay. So, the anchor locker wasn't latched, but it's latched. Billy fixed it for me. Say hi, Bill. Now, uh, a few things before we do the trim tabs. Number one, I always shut this windshield because in, it fits perfectly. In time, it begins to bow against this side. Okay, so that's why I always shut that. If I'm idling, no big deal. Now, trim tabs. This is something people really struggle with because they overthink it. People get excited to work all the buttons. So what these are are the flappers on the side of the boat, on the back. They go up and they go down. When they're up, the boat goes the fastest. When they go down, it slows it down because it actually drags the nose of the boat down. So they're side by side. So if we have heavy people sitting on this side, we can just level them out right here, just like clicks, okay? We can bring it back up if they move and people indefinitely will move, okay? When it's rough as sin, though, you will be amazed at what this boat can do when you put the trim tabs down. Our lake is a flooded river, and there's massive boats out here. It's nice right now because it's a weekday. So I get the boat on plane. Helps if you trim down, Brandon. Okay? So to set the trim tabs, you pick something in front of you. Do you see the big white condos way up there? Skyscraper? <laughs> for the Lake of the Ozarks. I'm going to show you how they work. So I'm not touching the steering wheel. Okay? And I'm going to put the tab down. And you'll notice that the boat, whoa, is going to turn. Look at the wheel turning on its own. And that made a complete circle. Let's go ahead and bring that back up. Straighten her out so we know the port side works. Now if you get these mixed up, and you will, because people will move about 10 seconds. Quick 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll bring them back up all the way. Now let's get through this chop here we created. Let's do the other side. So again, not touching the wheel. I'm just holding the other side. Whoa, we're leaning. So you see that? How it's turning the boat again. Let's go ahead and bring them back up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Boat straightening, it, straightening itself out. Now, when it's rough as sin, this is where you get the boat. Upper 20s, you should put them both down. Watch what happens. Completely flattens out the boat. See the waves starting to spray way off up here because we're pushing the boat down. And just like this, the boat rides extremely flat and well. It's just securely locked in the water. Well, guys, we're going to go pull her out on the trailer. She runs perfectly. Okay, now that we've got our other water, I want to show you the condition as well as well as go over a few housekeeping things. So, I hooked the hose up, turn your watery pump on, see it's got antifreeze in it, but showing how that works. So you just add water to it and you'll flush that antifreeze out, just run it all out of all the little hoses, and then put water in. Remember that water's not for drinking. I put the lid back on the motor. Now if you have that water pump on, every now and then you'll hear a gurg 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 sound. And that's just building up pressure. Back to the lines. See? Transom shower. Some of these, some of these have this does have. Bow shower sprayer. Wash your anchor down. Oh yeah. About out of antifreeze. But you saw it's got pressure. And that's how you know it works. <laughs> and air. See, this one's the farthest from the prompt, so it's taking the longest to prime. Okay. Jesus, Brandon. Now, I got myself out of order, so I got to start at the beginning. I'm showing you the interior condition. So we'll start in the back. I won't even edit this. I won't even cut it. I'll just get back here. Okay, so back here we have the great big swim platform. 
stereo remote control, place to plug our line in. Now, let's take a hard look at our condition. So we're going to stay to the port side to look at the vinyl itself. Our motor's under the back seat, battery switches are underneath the corner there, port side bench. Remember this has the factory upgraded stereo system. We have storage in here. Extra light poles. I guess they really didn't want to not have their light on at night. Port side captain's chair with the flip up bolster. Cup holders. There. It was missing a cup holder back there but I put a new one in it. Okay. Into the bathroom. Pump out. Sink down there, some of that antifreeze came out, some owner's manuals, okay. Coming up into the bow, these real comfortable, cozy loungers. Vinyl's beautiful. It's a dead bug. See, it's not. It's coming right out. Come up here, we have our anchor locker. This popped up in the video. See, you turn it like that, and it's spring-loaded. So right up here is where you put an anchor and it's also about a boarding ladder. So when you turn this and lock it down, see, watch, <clears throat> getting tight. Right here we have a cooler. Okay, let's take a look at the vinyl here. Beautiful. Bow filler cushions, as I mentioned, are underneath this seat. For the stuff that you don't use a whole lot, your storage here, see it's nice and clean in there. And then the stuff that you do use a whole lot, storage right there. Now remember, Stover Carpet in Campton has this piece that they're cutting. I was able to find the matching carpet from a place in Dallas, Texas. And they sent me a 4x4 piece to make. So you got storage shelf, make a replacement. Cooler, table leg. I know there weren't very good and very many pictures of this boat online, so to me it's just a total awesome bonus how beautiful this is. Everything's subject to opinion, but I I see a lot of these. So. There's our table and trash can. Right there, so the table can either go up front or in the back. How the bimini top opens is you just unzip this boot right here that says C Ray. And then there's two straps in there that pull forward, covers the entire cockpit. And then the straps go into these little eyelets here. One there. One there. There's the pump for the waste station. Good lord. And then let's do, there's your water fill. And then your gas is over here. Don't put gas in the water, don't put water in the gas. Especially don't put water in the gas. When you take these off, these are twist, twist off caps, uh, just like that, but it actually says gas on it right there, if you can see that, it's red letters. Uh, some people worry if they don't get this little clip that opens this, it's a twist off, you don't even need it. Okay, so I'm going to jump down, we'll look at the exterior. How sweet is this bad boy? Starting off the out drive. Really pretty. Props are great. Anodes are great. There's a little bit of bumping. Like, see, this boat is lift cap, so that's probably from leaving it trimmed down and bumping on their boat lift. So it's nothing structural. This is just metal. It's just a slight little nick in it. Props are good. These are our trim tabs I mentioned in the video. So now we're coming around the port side, taking a hard look at the Joko. Rub rail's nice. Really the only spot that I found on the exterior, exterior to speak of. Um, there were some spots up here in the very front from bumping into the dock that we fixed on the gel coat. That's why there's no nicks, no scratches, nothing. There are just a little bit of little chippies in the rub rail. See right there? But that's, that's it. Right here's where we polished out scratches. You can barely see. Hopefully you can see in the video. They've been repaired, but you can just tell where they were repaired. See, like right here. See, it's called a ghost line, where you actually fill this with clear, sand it, fill it with clear, and polish it back out. So the hole's in great shape. 
There's your docking lights. Coming around starboard side, we fixed the little nick right here. Well, my fingernails are dirty. That's embarrassing. There's your horn. Oh, I should probably drop down for the hull. Right there. Looking great. There's a few just little rub spots in the uh, graphic, but that's just pinstriping, so that just comes right off. You want to take it off. GreatLakeSkipper.com. I'm not paid to endorse them, but they do have a lot of Sea Ray graphics and stuff because they buy overstock items. There's your captain's call exhaust. There she is. So the last thing I want to make sure I point out is when we ship this to you, as long as this video is found favorable, I lay the bimini down. I take the carpet out. All the seats that aren't attached or bolted or screwed in, I remove. So some people get upset when they get their boat. They're, they're expecting what they're seeing right now. But that's not what you'll get. But as soon as you snap in the carpet, put the top up, wipe the seats back down, what you see is what you get. My name is Brandon. I really hope you appreciate the boat. We had fun making your video. I probably won't see you on the water, but I hope that you send me a picture of you enjoying the water on your new boat with your... Models, popping bottles!